everyone and welcome to this video on Visual Studio Code extensions. Today we're going to be looking at 12 killer extensions that I use in my front-end workflow and I would highly recommend that you use in your Visual Studio setup. So without further ado, let's go check them out. So what we'll do is we'll have a look at our first extension. So if we go over here to the extensions icon in the menu, click that, we go to import costs and what we do is we get an extension that basically gives you the cost of the module or the import that you're bringing into the file or the project. It's super handy if you're ever working on a project and you want it to be as performant and as quick as possible it's super important to know the cost of everything that you're importing into your file and into your project. So something like this is pretty invaluable. If we go here and if we type in import react from react, you know, just a basic import, we can see immediately the cost of react uh, importing it in here and what this module is in terms of its size and even how big it is uh, gsit. So the next one is highlight matching tags. So this one highlights both the starting and end tags. So if we go here and we'll create a, an example component and we can see that if we click this initial tag here, that it immediately highlights the end tag. So you get an understanding of where something is. So if we were to suddenly just nest this and then we click div, highlights the end, the span, highlights the end, and H2, fantastic. Super useful when you're doing some quick troubleshooting and you're just trying to find out where the end tag is. Now, another really important one is the bracket pair colorizer. And this one here basically highlights the block scope of whatever function you're working in. And it can be super handy and it can make your workflow a lot quicker by understanding where the scope starts and ends. So if you go into here, we go take a look. So if I click up here, you can see this yellow line start here and go down. And if you were to add more scope, it then changes color automatically. And you could keep doing this and it would keep changing the color. The fourth on the list is auto rename tag. Now this basically renames the start and the end tag depending on where you're typing. So if we go off here, and if, for example, I want to make this span another div, if I just highlight the first one, it automatically highlights the second one. And if I click div, it'll change that to div. If I change this to a span again, it'll change that to a span. Or if I want to change this to a h1, a h3, a h4, a h5, it automatically does that for us pretty handy tool to speed up your front end. Probably one of the most important ones for troubleshooting. This here will give you a history of your document in line as you're editing. So if I was, for example, editing this code, I won't see anything because this is a new file. But if we go into the project and we click something that's been edited before and we scroll down and we'll just click this area here, you can see that it gives us an idea of some of the work that's been done, the commit hash, all the details surrounding that, even the time, etc. It is a valuable tool. If, for example, you're scrolling down and you just want to see some of the changes that have happened, and when you start to do projects with quite a few other developers, something like this can be really invaluable. Now, another classic VS Code extension that everyone should have is the debugger for Chrome. One of the most important VS Code extensions that you can get. It basically takes one of the superpowers of Chrome and Chromium and puts it into Visual Studio Code for you. And this is a great debugging tool and you can use it in the terminal window below. VS Code icons. This is usually one of the first ones you install onto uh, VS Code. What this does 
is this gives you some wonderful icons for your entire project. So a TypeScript file will come up with a TypeScript icon, uh, a Git file will come up with a Git icon. Aesthetically, it does transform your VS Code experience quite a bit and it is something I would recommend as a first extension install. Another super important one is Git Lens and this is one that you can already see is super popular. Now Git Lens is what basically superpowers your version control in VS Code, like toggling uh, your Git blade. So you can basically see all the time logs and all the commits line by line in a visualization there. You can also see uh, your Git history and you can see it in a lovely uh, Git flow there. And you get all the hashes and it's a really lovely setup and they've done a really great job you can change branches, you can uh, decide what you want to show, you can choose which authors, uh, you can choose a lot of stuff and you can search and the list goes on. It's something that everyone should have in their VS Code setup if they're using Git. Now, a great one that I use is partial diff. This is a great way to check differences between code. It's something that VS Code doesn't do by default, but adding this gives you that functionality. So if you can see here, you can basically compare two bits of code and find out the differences. It's something that IDEs like uh, PHP Storm do really well. If I was to take this, if I was to copy that and then compare it. So if I was to copy this and if I was to compare it against uh, a very similar function just down here, if I go to compare text with keyboard and it tells you basically what the differences between the code are, a really valuable tool. And again, it's plugging a gap that Visual Studio Code doesn't have. One that I would highly recommend if you are coming from PHP Storm or WebStorm. A fun one that I like to use is the emoji snippets. Now, the reason I use this is because emoji snippets acts a bit like if you use Slack, you're able to add emojis in a way you're writing it in Slack. So if I was to go here and if I was to type in rocket and I get the rocket emoji, it's pretty quick, pretty simple. It feels familiar. Whereas not every other emoji extension on VS Code does that. Now you might be thinking, what is the point of having emojis in your code anyway? Well, in front end, A, it can be fun, and B, you can also use it as a CSS selector, if you didn't already know, and then you can reference that in um, your CSS. So it can be fun and can be useful. Now, one that's certainly more useful is Live Server. So what Live Server is really good at is if you want to just spin up a quick project, just test some HTML, uh, test some JavaScript against it or something like that, all you do is you create the file and you click the icon in the bottom right here, go live, and you're away and you can start browsing the work in the browser and check it immediately. A very, very handy tool. And it's a tool that I use nearly every other day for projects that I'm doing on the side. Now the last and certainly no means least extension on this list is the reload extension. Now this one is super valuable. If you were to update something on the fly or if you did a multi-extension update, all you need to do is very quickly click reload and it will jump you right back to where you were in the project you were without having to need to reopen it and to get you back to where you were. And that's going to be it for this video. If you like what you saw and if this was useful in any way, uh, give this video a like, subscribe, click the bell icon to get alerts on other future videos similar to this. I've been Harry and this has been Curious Bite.